So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I cannot say good night or good evening to all because people come uh, from different places in different time zones. And it's always difficult to get people in England on the, our, in our meeting at this time because it's probably 1 a.m. And in India, it uh, may be some other time. Um, so first, I'd like to congratulate the president, uh, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali and the People's Progressive Party Civic in being sworn in as the new government in Guyana. It was a long, hard, rocky, uphill road in the journey to democracy and obstacles, unexpected obstacles were often thrown in the way. We had held a three consecutive Zoom public meetings on Guyana in this forum, which was well attended, and we had the highest number of attendance, which went to about 80, 80. <clears throat> Congratulations to President Chandrika Pasad Santoki, head of the VHP, Progressive Reform Party, who has been recently inaugurated as president of Suriname. Uh, will Kamala Pasad Bisesa join these three, so, sorry, join these former opposition leaders in becoming the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago tomorrow night? Would she be the third politician of Indian descent in the Caribbean to ride a wave of popularity to emerge as the Prime Minister tomorrow night? These are questions that we are going to address in the meeting. So this is a weekly forum hosted by ICDN, Indo-Caribbean Diaspora News, a free online newspaper dedicated to highlighting and discussing issues, events, and people in the Indian diaspora in the Caribbean. Because they and their views are often marginalized in the mainstream media and in formal discourses. This public meeting will take the form of a panel discussion. Each speaker will talk for seven minutes, S-E-V-E-N, seven. And after all of them have spoken, the floor will be open for brief questions, comments, and contributions. The meeting would end about 9 p.m. So basically, it should be about an hour and a half long. Uh, I see everybody has muted their microphone, so that is good. If you have to speak, then you have to unmute your microphone, which is a bottom, which is a, a, a symbol at the bottom left corner of your screen. Um, you, if you have to speak, just unmute your microphone. Don't try to catch my attention or wave your finger and so on because I can't see you because I, I have an entire dashboard to look at and your face is so tiny on the screen. Um, so our topic today is who will win the election tomorrow? Tomorrow is voting day, the general election in Trinidad and Tobago. Which party has the best record and plan to manage the country? At the end of tomorrow, 41 members representing 41 seats or constituencies will be declared winners. The ruling party, the People's National Movement, that is the PNM, is led by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley. The opposition, the United National Congress, the UNC, is led by Kamala Pasad Bisesa, who is a woman. 19 political parties are contesting 41 electoral seats. The PNM is contesting all the seats in the two islands. The UNC is not fighting in Tobago. Most of the 19 parties are one-man parties. The election will be won or lost based on the outcome of five or six, or some say nine marginal constituencies, also called swing or battleground constituencies. So I think um, Vishnu Bishram is here. Is that so? Vishnu, are you here? I thought I saw your presence. Yes, Vishnu. Yeah. Right. Okay. So our first speaker 
is Dr. Vishnu Bisram, well-known pollster, pollster who is well, uh, widely published in Trinidad and Tobago and in the Caribbean. The NAFTA pollster. He's an international journalist who has published in numerous newspapers all over the world. He is a man who we should envy because while most of us has one doctorate, he has multiple doctorates and he has been widely traveled, widely traveled. I'm sure the, the lockdown is affecting him tremendously, but once the borders are open, he will be able to fly again up from country to country. So Dr. Bisram, the floor is yours to speak for seven minutes. I, I thank you very much. I, I, I hope I'll take much less than seven minutes and open the floor uh, for discussion or provide more uh, ample time to uh, my uh, distinguished colleagues. Um, I, I am not that uh, familiar with uh, who has the better economic program, but I can speak about who I think is likely to prevail tomorrow. Um, as uh, you correctly pointed out, I have uh, been doing polls over the last month, in fact, just before the elections were called and subsequently and regularly. And the latest poll findings as of this morning, it would seem to me that the United National Congress is in the lead in 21 seats. Um, and in three other seats, it is very, very close. So um, while I would be um, hesitant to call the elections now for the UNC, only because in three of those seats that the UNC has, and um, it, is, it is extremely close in terms of the margin of error in the poll findings. So as I had written before, the UNC is in, is in control of 18 seats going into the elections. And I believe as the poll shows, it will retain those 18 seats. Um, one of which is very close, but I believe the UNC is going to prevail in those 18 seats. And then we have uh, the Maruga seat. The UNC is ahead. Again, it's within the poll margin of error. St. Joseph, the UNC is in the lead within the poll's margin of error. The Horkata, the UNC is in the lead within the poll's margin of error. So 18 plus 3 gives it 21 seats where the UNC is leading. The UNC is trailing between three to five percent in three other seats. Brandy, Tunapuna, and San Fernando West. So these are wild cards. They can come in. Out in Tobago, in the two seats, the P PDP is almost neck and neck in one of the seats, Tobago East, and it's not very far behind in the Tobago West seat. So um, it's quite conceivably that either party could win both seats or, or they could split 1-1. One, one, one. Um, so we have to wait, I guess, until this time tomorrow to see whether the polls would be correct. Um, in passing, I should mention that there were other polls done and those polls found that the PNM is ahead except one other poll that showed the UNC ahead in, eight, in 21 seats as well. What I found rather interesting is, of, is, is as of today, several of those polls saw, show a very, very large percentage of undecided. I have not come across that in the last couple of days. It is not a case where people are undecided. People just make up their minds and they just are not revealing it to the pollsters. And so one has to be able to, de to detect based on their body response and in their response to other questions of uh, which way one would think or assume that they would vote. And it is based on this assessment, I think that the UNC may very well create an upset tomorrow because around the country, there is widespread disenchantment with government at the moment. And one could see a very low turnout among traditional supporters of the government. If that turns out to be the case, then one could very well see the UNC climbing all the way to 24 seats. Um, one commentator said that it's even possible to go higher. I, I am not seeing that trend. That wave um, is not being seen at this moment. Whether it will happen tomorrow, I don't think so. So that's essentially my view on 
who is going to win tomorrow. The election is still up in the air. And even though I'm calling 21 for the UNC, as I carefully pointed out, three of those seats are within the polls margin of error. And that was my contributions for tonight. Thank you. That was short and to the point, um, Dr. Bistram. So our second speaker had appeared um, last day, Mr. Ralph Miraj, a newspaper columnist, talk show host, and former teacher, playwright, and actor. He uh, uh, starred in the movies The Right and the Wrong and BIM. Mr. Miraj holds the unique position to speak because he's a former PNM and UNC government minister. Mr. Miraj, the floor is yours. Unmute and unmute your mic and speak, please. Unmute, unmute. No, okay. Right, go ahead, we're now hearing you. All right, good. Yeah. Now, well, I generally agree with what Vishnu said. Um, and good night to everybody. Um, it is a tight race. It has been that way. And I think the marginal constituencies will determine the outcome. Uh, it is my view that the UNC could be could win at least three of these, possibly four. Um, they are doing well, I think, in Maruga Tablelands, in Joseph, La Hoqueta, Talparo, San Gandhi. They are fighting hard in Tunapuna and San Fernando West. All hell, all of these are held by the PNM. And I, I also share the view that the UNC will retain Sama Bharataria. What I found is that the motivation is very high among UNC supporters. They are buoyed up by the prospect of winning. Energy levels um, seem higher than in the PNM. The UNC appears to have a significant percentage of PNM supporters who are disenchanted with the present administration, which has performed very, very badly over the last five years. The UNC slate has been a, an, an, an interesting um, development. It is a good mix of diversity in race, gender, and youth. And I think the leadership must be complimented for this. There's a certain freshness in the team. And, and this is generating great enthusiasm, particularly among the younger voters. The PNM team, the PNM does not seem to have that appeal. With mainly old stages in the front line, it seems somewhat stale by comparison with the UNC. I think the PNM's message is also very stale. They, they have one thing really, they, blame, they are blaming Kamala. And on the other hand, the, P, the UNC has presented a plan for the economic transformation of Trinidad and Tobago. And until the, the PNM had published their, their, their manifesto in the final week of the campaign, one had no idea of what they intended to do. And interestingly, they have not been boasting of any achievements over the last five years. Um, indeed, there's not really much to talk about from over the last five years. I think the leader of the PNM has not done the party much good. In addition to being almost always abrasive and angry, which turns off many citizens, Rowley has been seeking to be sensational, I think, rather than substantial. And this has been most of the coming of a prime minister who has been in office for five years. He has given the impression of being desperate. Voter, <coughs> excuse me, voter turnout is critical tomorrow. The, 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 the party with the superior election day machinery has an advantage. If the UNC is to benefit from the momentum of its very effective campaign, it must ensure that all its supporters go to the polls. Now, I would just want to share what I used to do as a candidate previously in, 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 in the two, two, three elections that I fought. Though I always ensured that my election day operations were impeccably organized, I have always told my constituents that they shouldn't wait for the party to send transportation for them that it is their responsibility, their civic duty to go to the polls. They owe it to their children to go to the polls, I used to say. So I used to tell them, walk, run, ride, drive, get to the polling booth and get there early. Because as a candidate, I want all my votes in the ballot box by 12 noon on polling day. And I must say the strategy worked to a very great extent and many other candidates adopted my strategy. 
Now to the other part of the question, which party is better to govern? Now I have said repeatedly that the main responsibility of a party in opposition is to prepare for government. And the PNM didn't prepare between 2010 and 2015 when they were in opposition. They developed no plan to take the nation forward. And as far as I'm concerned, it is the main reason that they never got off the ground in government. It is the main reason why they have underperformed. In fact, I recall Rowley saying at the end of two years, and it's after the after two years, that they have taken their time to they have taken that time, two years, to get to know government and to feel their way around, and that now they were ready to go into action. This was halfway in their term. And for me, it was really the height of absurdity, another indication that they had not prepared for government. Now, as I said in my express column this morning, the PNM wasted five year, precious years in government. When we as a country needed the most effective government, we got the most unprepared and inefficient cabinet. The country was facing, when they came in, and it is still facing, fundamental challenges. Our, first, our economy was fundamentally challenged by the global energy revolution. The society's de decades-long decay was producing disturbing social phenomena and the parental institutional dysfunction in Trinidad and Tobago was denying citizens the efficiency and productivity needed for security, justice, and com competitive modern living. The PNM did nothing on these three fundamental challenges facing the country over the last five years. We therefore remain an undiversified economy in dire need of new foreign revenue streams now that the energy revenues are down permanently. Foreign reserves are running low in this country where we import almost everything that we eat, drink, wear, and use in our homes, hospitals, factories, and offices. Humongous debt incurred by this administration for consumption rather than investment will also consume reserves in debt servicing, further jeopardizing our economic security. In my view, we are heading inexorably for the intensive care unit at the IMF hospital. They, left, they also left our institutions stagnant and dysfunctional. Where are the reforms for the parliament, local government, the public service, the judiciary, health and education sectors, the service commissions, procurement and campaign financing. They've also left social decay un, 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 unattended, unchecked. Today we are plagued by student hooliganism, sexual promiscuity, pornography, and prostitution in so many schools. Thousands graduating, lacking basic numeracy and literacy. Domestic violence in the country, 10,000 women annually seek protection. Uh, teenage pregnancies and a frightening level of uh, sexual abuse of children. Social decay, as any, everybody would know, is at the heart of the criminality that proliferates in this country today. And they did nothing about it. So that after their abysmal failure, nothing the PNM now promises in their very late manifesto will persuade me that they are serious and capable of dealing with, the, with our problem. The fact is they had their chance, they did nothing. Imagine this. They spurned agriculture for five years, giving it a paltry sum in every budget, the lowest ever. The prime minister uttering the absurdity during his term that we don't have enough land for commercial agriculture. And they now come in their manifesto to talk about a plan for the nation. To expect them, anybody to believe that there's any commitment? On the other hand, I find the UNC quite persuasive. They have obviously been doing their homework. They have been doing their homework. They were preparing for government, which I think is a cardinal responsibility when you are in opposition. And how do I say, why do I say that? Because in an unprecedented novel approach, the opposition leader in her last budget response revealed the, nation, the party's national economic recovery and diversification master plan, 2020 to 2025. And this plan, 
has been the major message of their campaign. It is a wide ranging suite of plans and programs for the resuscitation and sustainable growth of the economy of this country. Whilst not ignoring the traditional energy sector, diversification is at the heart of this economic master plan, which focuses on agriculture and agro-processing, the digital economy, the creative industries, renewable energy, infrastructure, transportation, manufacturing, and tourism. The plan envisages strategic investments in niche non-energy sectors where we have strong competitive advantages, market opportunity, and growth potential. It aims to create 50,000 jobs by 2025 through 12 flagship projects, including the Brechin Castle Agro-Processing Complex, St. Magdalene Manufacturing Facility, East-West Biotechnology Manufacturing Corridor, Civiler Digital Information Park, Innovation Park, Tamana Solar Tech Renewable Energy Park, West Port of Spain Trinidad Creative Arts Street or Area, East Port of Spain Steel Pan Manufacturing Facility, Piaco Aircraft Maintenance Repair and Operations Hub, Cedras Special Economic Zone, Point Galliota Energy Logistics Hub, Plymouth International Cruise Ship Marina Complex, and Tobago's first locally branded hotel. In other words, according to this plan, every area of the country will see economic activity stirring with the UNC. I'm therefore very, very encouraged, very encouraged. I've been telling the PNM for the last five years, where is your plan? You ought to have prepared. So I'm encouraged that the UNC is prepared, has prepared for government. They clearly know what they are going to do and with this plan. One expects them to hit the ground running from day one in office. They are prepared for government. That's my, oh, my comment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Maraj. And now we go to our second to last speaker, Mr. Robin Montano, a distinguished attorney at law and former senator in the Trinidad and Tobago Parliament for almost 10 years. Mr. Montano has attained the status of a respected elder and statesman. Mr. Montano, you have seven minutes. Oh gosh, <laughs> thank you, Kuma. I don't know about being a respected and so on. I'm certainly an elder, that's for sure. I, have, I happen to agree with that, uh, just about everything that Ralph said. I don't, I don't agree particularly with uh, what Mr. Biz is it Mr. Bisram or Dr. Bisram? Doctor, Dr. Bisram. Either doctor. one, it doesn't matter. No, uh, I, no I, 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 I don't want to be insulting to anybody. If you're a doctor, then you're a doctor, a PhD. Um, no, I don't agree with everything that Dr. Bisram said. Uh, but I do agree with just about everything that Ralph Maraj said. Um, if I can deal with who is prepared, who is better, who appears to be better prepared, I think that the, Ralph put it very well and very succinctly, and there's hardly anything that I could add to that. I agree that the UNC appears to be better prepared. Certainly, I've searched long and hard to try and see exactly what the PNM would do and looking at looking at what they promised to do in 2015 and what they actually did do which was just about nothing uh, leads me to believe that these these guys really haven't got a clue but let's deal let's let's turn to the question of who is going to win and who is going to lose I am of the view that the UNC is way ahead I don't think I don't agree with Dr. Bisram that, first of all, I don't agree with his 21 seat prediction. Uh, I agree with his prediction, uh, which apparently is just from today, because in today's, I think it was the Express, he is, he is quoted as saying that he saw the PNM ahead. Well, now he, he has changed his mind. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But I don't think it's going to be close at all. In fact, the reports that I'm getting suggest that there is going to there's very possibly going to be a small tsunami i am seeing 22 seats let me call them 
uh, for you. I, first of all, let me put it to you this way. There, there, there are eight vulnerable PNM seats. They are Toko Sangha Grande, Tunapuna, La Hoqueta, Talparo, St. Joseph, San Fernando West, Maruga Tableland, Tobago East, and Tobago West. Let's deal with Tobago's first. From all the reports that I am getting, it appears that Watson Duke is going to win Tobago East handsomely. Tobago West is, is jumping. So you know what? For the sake of argument, let's give PNM Tobago West. So that means that they are seven down. Now, um, the other uh, the other seats, Tuco Sangre Grande. My inf my information is that that seat is jumping. That uh, it is it is possible that it might hold, but my information is that it is not going to hold. Certainly, I happen to know quite a few people in Sangre Grande are very upset with the PNM candidate. You know about this, Dr. Bizram. You know, you know that people are upset with the candidate, PNM candidate, and you know why, don't you? Yes. Yes, he, he's not, for those who can't see it, he's nodding yes. And, but yes, I will yes, tell you, yes, of course, yes. I will tell you why that they're upset with him. Apparently, he's on a fraud charge. The allegation is that uh, his father and his uncle, two brothers, had a joint account in a bank. I, I think it was RBC, but I wouldn't swear to that. They had a joint account which held quite a bit of money. Two or three days after the father died, the, the son, who is now the PNM candidate, went into the bank and attempted to transfer, use his, father's power of attorney that the father had given the son to transfer all of the funds in the joint account out into his account personally. The bank refused because the father was fairly well known and everybody knew that the father had died and a father becomes, um, not a father, a power of attorney uh, is no longer valid the minute somebody dies. So the allegation is that the son then went to uh, uh, the, a branch in Arima and did the transfer there. When the uncle found out about it, the, the uncle went and complained to the police and now the man is on a fraud charge. And people know that in Sangre Grande. Uh, apparently this has hurt him badly understandably i wouldn't vote for a man who did that and uh, the 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 charge appears to have a lot of meat to it so i am not certain that he will that pnm will hold grandy at all um la hoqueta Talparo has been gone for a long time this girl jolene john is going to win it saint joseph we are going to see the end of terence dale singh and there are many who will say thank God for that favor. Uh, this boy, Aloy Hunt, is going to win it. Um, Tunapuna, now that, I, th I had thought that Tunapuna was going to be tight. The information I have today, and I had it also since about Wednesday, is that this boy, David Nackett, is, gonna, is going to take that seat. Um, the uh, the one seat that I was worried about was Barataria, but it turns out that Barataria, uh, this boy Saddam Hussein, had a huge motorcade yesterday, and by huge I mean something like 200 cars, um, versus his PNM opponent, who uh, only could gather about 40 or 50 cars. Um, the the Sangha Grande seems to have come out. They've also been hurt. Sangha Grande has a high Muslim population. And Sangha Grande, uh, not Sangha Grande, sorry, Saddam not Hussein has been helped enormously by Nafisa Mohammed. And apparently the whole Mohammed clan who dominate um, 
uh, politics in that particular constituency have come out for her. San Fernando West, um, my information is that that seat is very, very tight. I'm not very surprised. Um, while I, I have had very good reports about the UNC candidate, I think that he's ethnically the wrong mix. Uh, San Fernando West uh, requires a Christian Indian to be, to be in there. And um, he doesn't fit that bill. So that will hold, which, which surprises me because San Fernando West also has a, a large number of Petrotrin workers. And of course, uh, Dr. Rowley is famous for saying the PNM is not going to close Petrotrin and then closing it and putting 10,000 people out of a work. Um, my family still has a business interest in, in San Fernando. And I understand from those members of my family who run the businesses down there that San Fernando is high street, especially is very much like a ghost town. So it's coffee street. And with a lot of businesses uh, scrunting to put it mildly. So uh, there, San Fernando has been hurt badly. That, that Faris al Rawi, who is basically from the Sukaran clan, Christian Indians, um, can make it. But uh, we shall see what we shall see. Um, now, there's something else that I wish to point out. And that is that I'm get, I have got reports that Dr. Rowley is facing a real challenge in Digo Martin West. Uh, apparently, he won the seat, and Dr. Bisram can confirm this, in 2015 by about 12,000 votes. But in 2010, he won it by only 800. Apparently, this boy, Rocky Garcia, uh, uh, gave him a heck of a run for his money. Now, this girl, I um, can't remember her name now. I'm sorry. You're right, Kuma, when you said I'm getting old. Um, I, I can't remember her name, but apparently she is from Karanaj. And Marsha uh, Walker. That's it, Walker. Um, uh, she is she uh, she is apparently from Karanage, and there have been a lot of uh, um, UNC posters and flags up in Karanage and in Big Yard, and also in other places in Digo Martin West as well. Um, whether whether the information I got this afternoon about. Digo Martin West was that um, she was, she, her, her polls were showing her uh, with 8,800 votes. Um, Rowley won last time with about 9,500 or something like that. So she's not very far away from, from him. If, if uh, there is a low turnout tomorrow of the PNM voters, believe it or not, Keith Rowley could lose his seat. Possible, not, not necessarily probable, which are two different things. So we shall see what we shall see. As for the UNC, as I said, they are vulnerable in three seats, but I see them holding those three seats. That is Shaguanas East, they're going to hold that. Uh, they are vulnerable in Barataria, and I see them holding that. And um, then they're vulnerable in one more, oh gosh. Point of pair. Um, point of pair, and that's it. And they're holding, and they're going to hold that one. So if, if my, number, my figures are right, then UNC is coming in with at least 22 seats. Um, PNM is down to 18, and Watson Duke is in with one. And that's the way I see it. This Thank evening. You. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Montano. Our final speaker is a discussant, and he is Vasant Ramracha. He's based in New York and is an Indian activist in New York and also in Trinidad, where he visits regularly. 
he attended City College in the United States. He has a BSc in Political Science and an MSc in Education and International Relations. So, Vasan, uh, unmute your phone and speak, please. Yes, yes, go ahead. But I think you uh, have uh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So we have the three speakers before, and most of them just give a lot of figures and great speakers strong, and great speakers weak for either party. I think you have a um, unstable uh, connection, Vasan. Um, so I uh... is it, you know one big solar kit tree that you had to deal with some butcher in it too. So Vasan, I may so ask you to um, uh, do something about your connection. My Brains are not formatted for that. Yeah, yeah. We we can't decipher what you um if you wanna come back later. No, uh, um, because we definitely yes, can't hear you clearly. Okay. So let me um open the floor. Can you hear me now? Oh. Um, all right, let's let's give it a shot. Me? Let's give it a shot. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're hearing you. But it's not clear. Can you hear me? Yeah, hearing you. Can you go hear ahead. me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we may we may have to come back to you, um, Basant, because there seems to be some connection. Can you hear me? We're trying, Can but you hear um, me? we're hearing you, but it's not uh, it's not clear. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so um, okay, so let's uh, the let's open the floor um, for questions. Vasan may come back um, later. Okay. If we can. So what I'm saying, the, 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 Kumar, I'm getting a, the, I'm getting a um, notification on my, on my the, thing, uh -huh. oh, my computer that says yeah. Vasan Ramcharaz network bandwidth right. is low. Yes, yes. So we would um, have to sort that out later. So let's open the floor. Um, the floor is now open for questions, comments and contributions. They must be um, short, no more than two or three minutes long. So we don't want really um, any speeches. Um, you can also participate by writing in the chat box at the bottom of the screen, make your comments and that can be visible to everybody. Please identify yourself by name or by country because we are uh, recording uh, this session and we also uh, we Kumar. also yeah yes, Ramesh Ramcharan Trinidad Takariqua um, yeah, yeah wait wait I have not done it yet okay so, so identify yourself by name and country because we are recording um, for the, these sessions and of course we want to do a demographic survey later on um, and we will record and uh, and uh, we are recording this and we'll edit it and uh, upload it later on YouTube. We are very thankful that for the first time, Bhakti TV, which is the Aranguez based um, TV station, is carrying us live, streaming live. 
So um, you don't have to catch well, my attention or get my permission. Just um, unmute your phone and, and uh, go ahead and speak, Mr. Um, Ramcharan. Yes, I was making the point um, to the pollsters and Mr. Montano. In the area I live, we have uh, three main candidates, which is the PNM, um, UNC, and also ILP, which is Jack Warner. Now, this afternoon, Jack had his parade, and it was really massive. So, and it's traditionally a PNM seat. So I would just like to hear the pollsters' uh, prediction or their views on the effect that Jack may have. Right. So let's um, come back to, uh, we will um, get, feed some questions and then come back to the presenters. So can we have a comment um, or question right. so from anybody I, else? I, can I, I have happen, a question? I, yeah, I happen to be familiar with Lopin Obonier and Jack's um, uh, presence in that campaign. Um, it is going to be a very interesting race. Um, from the very outset, I had said so. Uh, at the last time, the PNM won the seat by roughly 2,000 votes, just over 2,000. Um, the problem with the opposition, is Jack and the UNC candidate, uh, Prakash Williams, is that they're dividing the opposition votes. It is quite conceivably possible for Jack to be the wild card and win the seat. I have not ruled him out in that particular seat. And in fact, my report uh, made that note as well. Um, it is a three-way, it is a three-way fight. And I would say the race is between Jack and the PNM, not so much the UNC. Prakash Williams contested that seat uh, before. And I believe he, he scraped through 2,500 votes the first time he did, which was in 2007. I don't see him doing any better then. And I believe people may very well see voting for uh, Prakash Williams as a wasted vote and may very well uh, head towards Jack. So it will be an interesting contest. It will be an interesting outcome. It is unpredictable. It could go either way. Um, but I agree with the, um, the person who raised the point that, yes, um, Jack has been um, gaining a lot of traction in that particular seat. Um, and aside from that, I do want to say that I endorse the views expressed by uh, Mr. Montano. Um, I am not at liberty and freedom to speak the way himself, as well as Ralph Marat speak on certain issues, only because I do polls and I do not want to interject political uh, points in, in the polls as well. Um, I, I do agree with him that, um, that in Tunapuna, the UNC is doing extremely well. I think it's 50-50, and I wouldn't be surprised if David Nackett wins. In fact, I did make the point that since, since the UNC is ahead in St. Joseph, and the tide is in favor of the UNC, there is no reason why the UNC cannot win 24 seats. So instead of 22, it could very well be 24. And then if Jack were to win, then we'll probably end up in alliance. And if um, in Tobago, if... Uh, Watson Duke picks up one or two, then then PNM's route keep Raleigh is in serious trouble. Okay. So well, we would if, take I could, if I could just say okay, this, yeah, Kamal. Yes, quickly, Robin, quickly. Yeah, I would just like to say that I think Keith Raleigh is in serious trouble right now. Um, he he is facing a problem, as I said, of having to win his own seat. In any case, it is clear as of tonight that he is going to lose tomorrow that is his party is going to lose the question is not no longer if he will lose the question really is by how much right oh, so oh one, and one other point um, uh -huh. um the point about miss walker is out is also correct uh, miss walker is doing extremely well i don't know if she will get eight thousand votes but she's putting in a hell of a fight against keith rowley um, i'm sure tomorrow you're gonna have to spend his whole day there making sure that he gets his voters out um there is an anti rowley uh, sentiment, not just in the marginals, but nationwide, including in his own seat, as well as in the two other Diego Martin seats. Okay, good. So um, any other question or uh, comment? Can, can I have yeah. a, a question uh, to Robin? Uh, uh, who, somebody speaking? Uh, uh, Anthony, 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 Anthony Anjad. professor. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. 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 And then him, Raj, then him, Raj. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think, I think all 
three panelists seem to be reflecting who have indicated that the, the two seats are what, are what, 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 they have, what they have said. And the one that it seems to be the ticklish one, which is dividing them, seems to be St. Joseph and to a lesser extent Tobago East. Now, St. Joseph is a very difficult seat to poll, and it is not like Moruga or, or La Hauketa Talparo. There's a vote where there's a, a sort of inbuilt swing vote. So um, I wanted to ask Dr. Bishram uh, to what extent he has confidence in, um, in, in his it is prediction about St. Joseph. That is to say, to what extent the poll is sort of fully representative, and to what extent we can say with some degree of certainty that um, St. Joseph will go the way he indicated. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes Bishop. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Are, are you asking about St. Joseph in particular or, or in general? All the questions, all, all the seats. No, I think he was asking about St. Joseph. Sorry, in particular, I, I was saying that it seems, oh. yeah, let me just repeat what I, what I said. Yeah, I'm just repeating what I said. Um, I indicated that St. Joseph seems to be the seat that is in most contention, which is dividing the pollsters. The pollsters who either given 21 to the PNM or 21 to the UNC seems to be divided over St. Joseph. So I was asking the question, to what extent do you have confidence in your poll on St. Joseph? Because as I said, St. Joseph is not like Maruga or, 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 or La Hauketa Talparo. St. Joseph is a slightly different um, constituency where there's a kind of inbuilt swing vote that doesn't move the same way as Maruga or, or, or La Hauketa Talparo. So the question I'm asking you, um, to what extent yeah, do you right. have confidence so, in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, yes. the, poll, the, poll, the poll is showing that in St. In Joseph, the UNC um, Aloy Hunt, is ahead by about 3%. So um, that would be the level of, of, of the confidence of 97% of, of, uh, confidence that he should win. Okay, Himraj, I think you had a, a yeah. question or comment. Himraj Ramdad, Ottawa, Canada. Um, I actually had the same question before to, to the panels. Um, it's really whether St. Joseph, and a little bit, I didn't hear the comments about Maruga. I'm just wondering uh, what are the comments in Maruga and do we have strength or UNC in the St. Augustine area? Good question. Can I, uh, but if my information is correct and I believe it to be, um, Gypsy has lost in Maruga. Um, he's, he's in serious trouble down there and Maruga tonight is falling. Okay, good, thank you. I think uh, Satsukdev um, had indicated that he wants, and, and Ramdat, Jagesa, so whichever one is ready, just unmute your phone, Ramdat or uh, Satsukdev. Uh, I'm not seeing Sat. Right, anybody else? Um, because well, I, I could the, just say that uh, yeah. I saw Kumar, somebody posted a question and it, yes, it yes. went off my screen. But the question was, why is government responsible for the moral decay in society? I have an answer for that, but I don't know if anybody else wants to answer it first or they want, the want me to go first. What is the question? Why is government responsible for the moral decay in society? Well, the government has the responsibility to at least arrest the decay, arrest the social decay in the society, which has to be, deal with the moral decay. And it, might, it is my contention, and has been my contention, that uh, this administration has abdicated that responsibility completely. In that, for example, when I think Dr. Rowley had gone to a, a town hall meeting or a public meeting where people were asking him questions and so on. And the, question, and, the, and, and, and the question of domestic violence came up. He, when he, told, he told the woman, the, 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 the lady, um, that I am not in your bedroom, I'm not in your choice of men. Um, as though the fact that 10,000 women annually seek um, restraining orders and many thousands more remain silent um, is not um, the responsibility of the government 
the government has no um, responsibility in that regard to at least make an intervention to address um, um, domestic violence because in, in, when you have so many homes, for example, having this level of violence, the children growing up in these homes are traumatized. They end up more than more than likely being unbalanced adults. They can become, they can turn out to be angry um, adults, and they create more problems in society. So I have been advocating from the word go that the government has a responsibility for the social and, and moral and cultural regeneration of society. I, I recommended over and over that um, a special cabinet subcommittee ought to have been set up, made up of the ministries of education, culture, sport and youth, attorney general, um, <clears throat> and, and social development, supported by the technocracy, the university, NGOs, and so on to come up with a plan <clears throat> using the whole of government approach to, 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 to initiate um, an intervention from the state involving the entire society to deal with this problem of moral and social decay. Because that is a critical question. In fact, it is my, my belief, and I'm, I think it is a belief of many people who study the problem, that the social decay is at the root of, of, of the high level of criminality in the country, where um, we have exceeded murders annually twice, 500, and this population of 1.2 million, um, you know, we, we, we have surpassed the, United, the, the New York City, for example, which has 8 point something million and just 200 and something murders um, last year. So that there is a relationship between the, the, the violence, the murders, the level of, of crime, and the moral and social decay. So it is my response, my view, that a government cannot turn a blind eye to that. It has, it has a moral obligation, a, a constitutional obligation, a societal obligation to, to, to turn its attention towards arresting the social decay in the country. Okay. If uh, I could, yes, Robin. Uh -huh. If I could change the subject slightly. Sure. No, because I happen to agree with everything that Ralph said. Um, I would like to point out to you that, and the panel, and to every, any and everybody listening, that a lot of people tonight will be, uh, no doubt, uh, having difficulty in understanding why we are, are generally predicting a UNC victory tomorrow. Part of the reason for this is because the newspapers in this country have done a lousy job of keeping the, the public properly informed. All three of them are, are pro-PNM, they're pro-government, and they, um, they do it in all kinds of subtle ways, either by reporting heavily and negatively on the UNC, or by not reporting at all about anything that the PNM has done and, and actively stifling um, uh, uh, people who might be, might be willing to come out and say, hey, what the heck is Dr. Rowley doing? Like, for example, we've heard, we keep on hearing, and it's not just the newspapers, it's the mainstream media in general. It's the, it's the TV stations and it's the radio stations as well. The, the, the media is not being fair. Now, understand what I'm saying clearly. The media, any newspaper and any radio station has an absolute right to be biased. But if you're going to be biased, and you are a newspaper, then for crying out loud, say, well, look, we are pro PNM. And so we are not going to publish anything that is anti. It's a little bit like Fox News. Everybody knows that if you want to hear anything good about Donald Trump, go to Fox News. And, and, and you'll get it there. And they, don't, they, they aren't even particularly concerned about what is the truth or not. But you have, you have Dr. Rowley saying all kinds of things. For example, we have never been given the truth about COVID-19. 
Why? We have never been given the truth about the Delcy Rodriguez visit. Why? And if you want yeah. me to expand on that, I can and I will, you know. Yeah, we, have, we have never been given the truth about the closure of Petrotrin. Ah, just good point. Yes. We've never been given the truth about closure of Petrotrin. Days before, just weeks before, a week or two before, Rowley was saying they're not going to close down Petrotrin. Then they close it down. But the fact of the matter is a Lashley report, which the Cabinet Sub Energy Subcommittee had commissioned, did not recommend closure. They recommended structure, restructuring. The OWTU recommended restructuring. The McKinsey report, uh, one, of the most one of the most prestigious firms, um, re recommended restructuring. And <laughs> very, very interestingly, the chairman, Wilfred Espinet, and his um, and his board did not recommend um, closure. closure. And and to, and, and to continue so, with so, that. So, so the question is, why did they close it down? We have not been given the truth about that. And okay. that we, I, we, that we want to take some questions. Eh? We want to take some questions. If, well, if, well, well, let me just say, yeah. I have called uh -huh. that the Petrotrin sin. It is sin that is festering in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, I but, see. But, but, but uh -huh. no, but Kumar, hold on a second, because yeah, th sure. there's another point that Ralph uh, sort of hinted at. And it was this. Why is the OWTU supposedly the best deal? OWTU said, okay, we are offering 700 million US dollars. Well, where are they getting that money from? Nobody knows. Is it from this Venezuelan? Uh, financier of Maburo, and I call him Maburo on purpose, not Maduro. Maburo, because the man Maburo is a donkey. Is, is, are we, is, is, is he getting, are they getting, and then why is it the so-called best deal for the sale of Petrotrin when the, the deal that was announced, you're not, they're not going to have to pay any monies for at least two or three years, and then after that, it will be paid over something like a 20 year period. So we're gonna have to wait for about, about 20 years before we can get our devalued $700 million back. I mean, oh, what? Yeah. They, 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 we are not, we have not been told the truth about a whole bunch of things. And to, and to continue on with it, why did Dr. Rowley go to China a few years ago? Why did the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, together with his sidekick, the Minister of Everything, go down to Australia to buy some fast patrol boats? Why? And, and the news, but coming back to my central point, the newspapers, those so-and-sos have not put these questions to the government. Why? If you're not biased, then tell me why. Because it's either you're biased or you're stupid. You, you tell me if you're stupid, and then I will know not to read your newspapers anymore, but then tell the whole world that you're stupid. Good. So we have um, questions. I, uh, I see uh, Kamla has her hand up, and uh, uh, someone named Gaupati. So I, I'm also on you. Oh, yes. So go ahead, and then we'll take Gaupati and Kamla, whose yeah, hands are um, raised. Yeah, two, two things. But before I do that, let me add the fuel sale. Um, from Paria that eventually ended up in um, Venezuela. But what I want to ask is, um, I guess to the, to the pollsters, what do you think of Jack um, pulling votes from the PNM and so allowing the UNC to win that seat? And um, comment on point 410 and Labre, uh, from my understanding, there's a, a great deal of support for the candidates there. And the last thing, just recently, Dr. Rowley um, was predicting that come the election, come Tuesday, there will be petitions uh, to, to, to the EBC. And then that same night I was reading an interview by the CEO of the EBC, and she was saying a similar thing, that she expects um, lit litigation um, because we are litigious uh, uh, country, whatever, but the the two of them coincidentally were saying the same thing within days. So I don't know if probably Robin can talk about that. Thank you. Yeah, let's take yeah, another well, question. Uh, let me, let me, 
Okay. Let me keep a comment. Yeah. Let Go me ahead. Go on ahead. that, I think um, people we are seeing, you know, support for for against the PNM or migration of PNM supporters to the UNC throughout the country. There's no doubt. I mean, I got reports today from um, something is happening in Labre. They had this massive motorcade, and people are very excited about the possibility of Labre. You hear, you hear things about Point Fourteen. It, it, this is in sync with the general feeling that there is significant disenchantment with the UN, with the PNM throughout throughout the country, uh, among its own supporters, among its own base. Um, and I think it has to do with the lack of performance, but it also has to do, I think, with a general dissatisfaction um, with the character and tone of the frontliners in the party, which have, who have you know created a picture of arrogance and uncaring. They are abrasive, they are aggressive, um, and so on. And people get fed up of that. Okay. Good. So, um, yes, we have um, Kamla, whose hands is up, and Ga someone named Gaupati. If you can unmute your mic and speak, or we'd have someone else. Anybody yes. else? Question? Or Kamla, yeah? yeah, you're on. Go ahead. Oh, no, you went off again. Well, while we're waiting for her to come on, I'd just like to answer that gentleman's question. Sure, sure. Uh, I think that um, Vishnu, Dr. Bisram put it very well about Jack, and I have no real, I have nothing to add to that. But uh, on his questions about Labre and Point Fortin, I also think that Ralph put it very well, and I have nothing to add to that. On the question of uh, the election petitions, I think what he's particularly concerned about is this boy, um, Barry Paderat's uh, business, whereby PNM is indulging in, in some hanky-panky, trying to put out a notice saying that a vote for Paderat will be wasted vote and thrown away and so on. Uh, that, to me, smacks of absolute desperation. In any event, as I understand the law, and I, I don't have the law in front of me now, so I, I can't quote chapter and verse, but um, this chap, Israel Khan, wrote a letter to the papers this week, and he was spot on. And essentially, what he said was that once the returning officer uh, accepts when you accepts the the nomination on nomination day, then that's it, game set and match. So I I don't see I I don't see these. Uh, these technicalities really going anywhere very far. Right, yeah. Uh, Vishnu, you wanted to say something? No, well, those, um, there is a precedent for that already with Gypsy and, and Bill Chaitan, I think it was in 2000. Um, they were allowed to sit in parliament while the matter was uh, dealt with in court. And I believe eventually they were thrown out. Um, and at any rate, the country had gone back to the polls in December 2001. Um, that, that is correct. Um, and and <laughs> the, the, the person who, made, who asked the question about uh, point 14 and Labre is absolutely correct, uh, the UNC. There is a migration of support from the PLM to the UNC in both seats, but not enough. I don't think it's enough to, uh, for the UNC to carry those seats. I mean, this will only happen if you uh, have a tsunami like what took place in 1986, was it? Um, when no, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we're going to see a, a tsunami like 86. We might see a very small two-foot high tsunami, not a 86-foot high tsunami. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but but I, I agree with both Ralph and Mr. Montano. Both, both are spot on. And, and I regret I, I, don't, I don't have that kind of liberty to, to make those kind of political statements as they do. But, but they're on the right track of what is being <laughs> uh, played out on the ground. So gentlemen, let me ask, um, with this migration of support, the general kind of dissatisfaction with the PNM, its performance, uh, and the character of the general character of the party and the administration, isn't it possible that Jack Warner could find some appeal among the PNM supporters and um, you know, split the vote, uh, the PNM vote? And if he does, does it give Prakash Williams a chance? Um, in your view, Vishnu? Um, um, I, I, I don't know, it's conceivably possible, but here is a guy who, um, who thought he would have won in 2007 and he got 2,500 votes. Um, yeah. 
the, the, the Alliance won in 2010, I think they got about 9,000 votes. They lost in 2015, uh, they only got 7,000 votes. But in 2007, in 2007, wasn't the COP around? Yes, yes. Uh, when it, when you, when they, it, when it took, they have split that vote? Wouldn't they have when, split that vote? When, even when added, even when added was a thousand votes behind. Oh, okay. All right. I don't have the figures. Okay, so um, uh, Stephen Cummings, I see you were uh, surprisingly quiet tonight. And Ms. Ramsubik, you had indicated you wanted to say something and there's a Go Party who, and Kamala who still have their hands up on my dashboard. So um, I don't know if that's an error. Uh, Mr. Cummings, any comment or question from you? Anybody else? Well, while yeah. we're waiting, can, can, can I ask yeah. one? Yes, go um, ahead, Himraj. Um, given, given the increase in um, the number of cases uh, of COVID in Trinidad now, um, how much is there a threat to a very, very low turnout at the polls tomorrow? I, I, I'm not a medical doctor to speak on that, but I am deeply worried. I raised that uh, question with some of my friends, um, and they are not worried. They have taken all the measures uh, of, of having sanitizers and, and face masks and so forth. Um, of course, the elderly may, be, may feel vulnerable and, and decide, look, this is not for me. I mean, I don't want how it plays out. I don't know. I don't know which side okay. um, has a better chance I, I think, of bringing I think out that, their voters. I think there is a No, I just, and you see me so. Hi. Dr. Kumar? Hello. Dr. Kumar? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Kumar, there are some people who want to enter the meeting. Can you please, Dr. Dave Ramutar and others? No, no, I am not seeing them on my dashboard. Yeah, but I just wanted to make the point about the low turnout possibility. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Yes, um, I think the supporters of the UNC are so buoyed up, they're so enthusiastic, there's so, so much energy. Yes, the UNC is, is, uh, there's a kind of hunger to win. Uh, I, I suspect that because of this and because of the general Kind of feeling of dissatisfaction yeah, among the people yeah, with the ENF, um, yeah. that you know, if there is any them, part you, that you would suffer from the those who now who suffer from from the COVID situation, it could be the government. Yeah, good point. Right? Good point. Right. Thank you. May I don't do that? Right. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not know. hearing you at all. We're not hearing you at all. <laughs> uh, yes, sorry, we have about 10 minutes again. So um, if we. Uh, we, we can accommodate some more questions or com comments. Uh, Mr. Amsubik, uh, Ms. Uh, Professor Gonzalez, Cummings, if not, uh, Moral for, or, or um, yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Dr. Kumar, let, yes. me, let me just yes. make a, a, a small, I think this, is, this has been one of the most difficult elections to predict. Um, I have been trying to predict elections elections over the last 20 odd years. And most of the time I've gotten it correct. I think this time it is very difficult. And it is difficult because of the fact that you do not have a swing with a certain, of a certain size. You do not, you, you get the impression that um, the opposition, which in my view could have comfortably won this election if they had gone about it in the right way in terms of choice of leadership, in terms of a certain dynamism and so on. This is election was there because what happens in Trinidad is that we keep swinging the, the parties every five years. And this election was comfortably there. 
um, they should have been right now having about at least 23, 24 comfortably. That has not, in my view, uh, taken place. And the reason why well, we are still discussing, the reason why, I, let me just I, I don't, I don't let agree with you. But you can say that after, you can say that after. I have no problem. I've listened to you all evening. Just let me finish. I'm saying the reason why we are in this quandary here where the posters are not as clear as they should be at this point in time is simply because of the fact that you, you, the, the PNM still is in there in a certain kind of a way. And you know so why I said that you have these two marginal seats that determine the election. I mean, last time it was much clearer in my view than that. And it should have been much, much clearer now. But simply because of the fact that the swing is not of a nature um, in, across the board in, in, the, in, in all the marginals to allow it to, to, to have a clear, a clear outcome. For instance, Tanapuna is a seat, which is a bellwether seat. Like St. Joseph, it should, all, it should be going the other way, given the, the flow of, of things over the years or the swing of things over the years. So what I'm saying, I'm not choosing any particular side. I don't care even who, who particular wins in my view. Who wins. I have a certain kind of um, bias, but at the same time, to me, I, 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 I have no preference. All I'm saying, for instance, when I look at the data, when I look at the, at the, at the um, reaction of the population, I see a certain kind of uncertainty. I see a certain kind of, you know, they're not clear as to how they want to go, go forward. And this is, we have, this is why we have that kind of unpredictability. We can't say with any degree of certainty. As I said, I follow all the polls, and you have this kind of division among the pollsters. I believe they're all trying to their best to try to determine which, is, which, which side will win. But you know, it's very difficult to do it because the population itself is not clear. There's a lot of undecided voters, and that um, we'll see maybe most of them will make up their minds tonight, and tomorrow we may see what may happen. So all I'm saying simply is that you know we. we in a very unique situation. This is not a type of election I've seen around here. Most of the elections, you can more or less predict. You know more or less where the swing is going to go, and you can say clearly that this particular group will win. But this time, I'm having difficulty. Yeah. I don't. I couldn't. I couldn't disagree with you more. The problem with this election is that the newspapers have learned how to sell propaganda very well. And if you are getting not, your information from newspapers, that is not correct. We can dispute that. You know that is. Not, I don't know what you put here. About what the posters have said. You know, but I let you, I, when I interrupted you, yes. you complained that I was interrupting, and I could have yeah, my but say. I mean, not, I bring it in here well, I, I, because I disagreed said, with what you were saying, and now if you would let me finish, I will. I will explain to you something. One, the newspapers are biased and they are heavily biased. And if you want to debate that, I will debate that with you anytime. I can give you a thousand examples. You, have you seen anywhere in any newspaper, any criticism of Dr. Rowley going, down to, going to China and then going down to Australia to buy boats? And, and what is more, have you seen them raising that point today? Have you seen the newspapers going on and on about Petrotrin and the sale of Petrotrin today? Have you seen the newspapers talking about uh, the sale to OWTU? Nobody has gone on about Delcy Rodriguez. By the way, a little bit of moving along. I understand from my Venezuelan friends that Delcy is, pre is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Ms. Ramsevich, I think you unmute have your have phone, Ms. Ramsevich. You have to unmute your phone. What the um, oh, uh, And apparently she's re only recently pregnant too. She's about two or three months pregnant. Interesting timeline, isn't it? But, um, but, but, uh, and that I've got on very good authority just this afternoon from, uh, a Venezuelan politician with whom I was on the telephone with. But again, have you seen, have you seen them talking about, have you seen the newspapers talking about this? Have you seen the newspaper, you see the newspapers stoking the xenophobia in the country about the Venezuelans, but have you seen them criticizing our government's stance over that jack donkey in, in, um, in Caracas? Who, whose policies have caused something like 5 million Venezuelans to flee 
and have put a heck of a burden on us here in Trinidad because of the Jack Donkey and, and who has um, got a narco regime going on there and with the Cubans happily, happily sort of making a mess of our lives because they are forcing their people to flee. But no, you don't get any conversations about that in the press. No. And the press aren't biased. No. Okay. Fine. But you know, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, it ain't a goddamn pussycat. Okay. And that is my answer to you, Professor. Okay. Okay. Sorry, uh, I can't hear you. So, Ms. Ramsubik, I know you were saying something, but you have to unmute your, your phone there. Unmute your mic. Okay, I can't do it from this end, but um, okay. Somebody, the presenters, one of the presenters, because we just have a few minutes again. We are well, look, up I, in, I, I just wish to make, on, on the issue of media bias, I could tell you um, from my own experience, I did release polls that showed that Kamala Prasad Bissessa was way ahead of Keith Rowley in approval rating and in favorability and popularity rating. These were not carried in the media for whatever reason. Um, I also um, uh, released a poll that showed the UNC ahead nationally in popular support. It was also not carried. And I am being told uh, an hour ago by Robin Montano that the Express quoted me as saying that the PNM was ahead. I never released a poll that said PNM was ahead. Not yeah, recently, I, anyway. I, Not I, recently. I've got, I've got the newspaper downstairs, you know. Yeah. So I'm just saying that 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 I I did not I did not release any such poll in in recent weeks on saying that the PNM was ahead. In fact, the poll I was released yesterday and this morning said that the UNC was ahead in 21 seats. Okay. So Ralph, um, you have been silent. Just make the final comment, and then we are going to close. Well, you know, the it meeting. has been, a, it's been an interesting. I, I maintain the position that um, it is it is a tight race. Um, but I think the UNC is ahead in um, the marginals that we highlighted. Um, uh, Muruga Tablelands and Joseph, La Hoqueta Talparo, I think they can definitely win those three seats. Um, uh, they are fighting hard, I think, in Dunapuna and San Fernando West. Um, I think the, the, the choice of the candidate in San Fernando West was, was pretty good. I, I don't think that um, you necessarily need a Christian Indian. I was a Hindu Indian, and I, 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 I fought in, in, in for the PNM in San Fernando West, and, and I won the seat against a Christian Indian who was fighting for the NAR. Uh, I think that Sobel um, is, is a good, good candidate, and I think he has a, a good chance. Whether the strategy that was employed um, was adequate to penetrate and to capture the in disenchanted among the PNM strongholds like in Embarcadere and Marabella and La Romaine and so on, whether that strategy was employed and strong enough to capture those disenchanted voters um, remains to be seen. Okay, so if there are no pressing points or questions, I'm going to uh, bring the meeting to an end. Just, just, just to clarify, uh, for those who may not be familiar with Trinidad politics, there are 41 seats, just, just to clarify to our PG friends uh, and so forth. There are 41 seats, and in order to form the government, you need 21 seats. And, and in some of these seats, at least 15, uh, you have a majority of one race dominating those constituencies, and in another 15 seats, the majority of another race dominating those 15 seats. And the others, nine in Trinidad, two in Tobago, uh, you have a, 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 a balance of the two ethnicities plus other ethnicities, as Robin Montano had pointed out before. That makes it marginal or swing constituencies. Thank you. Uh, so thank you all for taking the time to participate. Thanks especially to the presenters. Thanks to the ICDN, ICDN team behind me, Indo-Caribbean Diaspora News. This is a team effort directed by Dool Hanuman, who appeared shortly on my dashboard. And then uh, the, the, the team effort is also in collaboration with Dr. Betoram and 
Ravi Dev and many others. Ravi Dev had promised to be here, but I guess he's busy in Guyana. And you are free to write for our newspaper, send letters, send articles, and so on. This meeting is held every Sunday night, 7.30 Trinidad Atlantic time on a variety of topics. So um, if you don't hear from us uh, on what we are going to talk about, please email or WhatsApp. We have our numbers at the bottom of the invitation. And we'd like to build a database. So send us your email address or your WhatsApp number and so on. Our tentative topic for next Sunday is how is culture, particularly Indian <laughs> culture, going to be treated in the new governments in Trinidad, Guyana, and Suriname? So we're going to have a Caribbean-wide forum next time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, be safe. Enjoy the rest of the day or night, depending on your time zone. Bye and uh, take care. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kumar. Good night. Good night.